Hey PC Gamers and welcome back to the PC Gamer Chat Log. I am Lauren Morton. And hey everyone, I'm Molly Taylor. And this week, Molly and I are bringing on longtime listener, first time yapper, Tim Clark, the brand director for PC Gamer, the head honcho, the guy, and known (laughs) Destiny 2 freak. Um, (laughs) He's no better than the rest of us to talk about um, microtransactions, the state of microtransactions in PC gaming, which Tim has lots of feelings about because of being into Destiny 2 and Diablo 4. And other things that are bad for and him. And Hearthstone. <laughs> and Hearthstone. Oh my gosh, yeah. So uh, A very he, unhealthy gamer lifestyle. <laughs> he uh, he has lots of feelings that is very relatable. So we're going to admit to some of our sins with him and have a bit of a whine about uh, the way that microtransactions are anymore and where we think they might be headed next. Uh, but before we get to the bad news, Molly, uh, <laughs> what did you, you play last week? Yeah, so I am kind of slowly starting to wind down from my fields of mystery hyperfixation um oh yeah i yeah i've still been playing it a whole bunch uh but yeah like i said i'm kind of starting to wind down now i've i'm closing out my first in-game year so i'm like in the middle of winter right now you can grow crops in the winter which yes start you girly like oh my god crops in the <laughs> winter um but you know like i've hit i've hit like the soft early access cap of the mines and of like the town right. like the town rank uh mm-hmm. level thing that that it has you know mm-hmm. i've still got stuff to do i still haven't decorated my farm i haven't got all of the animals yet and i haven't done like a lot of the heart events so i still have like things to do but i'm not going in super completionist i'm gonna maybe wait for the next update i think they're planning on releasing an update before the end of the year mm-hmm so like around the end of this year, beginning of next year, but I'm I'm still having a great time. It's such a good Steam Deck game. It's such a good like I finished work. I'm really tired, which was basically me all of last week. But I was just like really really tired, so I was just in bed or on my sofa just playing Mystria. So yeah, just so much fun, so much fun. It's a great game. Molly, I'm also in the middle of winter, and I also spent my whole weekend playing Fields of Mystery. Uh, did you? I, did. I saw you. I saw you. Like oh, I was like playing it. Up? Yeah, yeah. I was playing it, and then I saw it say that you were also playing Steam it. And I was like, telling on me. Yes, I'm also in the middle of winter. Um, I haven't quite hit the cap. I've been um, definitely investing in ranching. I'm I'm trying yeah. to get into breeding special colors of animals. I really want to do that. I have a red chicken and a red cow, and I want to start finding Cute. more of the colors um and i've been like redecorating my house trying to figure out the right layout for my farm which is like a cursed prospect because no matter how yeah. happy i think i am with my farm i'm like i think i did a nice job and it looks good then i will get on social media and be like oh look what everybody else did it's so <laughs> much better and i'm never gonna spend the time to make mine look like that but it's okay it's still really enjoyable i'm still loving all the characters i'm still loving their um tabletop gaming um yes dragons and drama dragons and drama have you got to season like the second campaign of dragons and drama when um this i don't know the pink haired guy oh my gosh what's his name Uh, oh yeah he does that in did wait did he not do that in summer for you was that a different yes yes and now we have the like older lady of the manor it's like her yes. campaign in the winter now, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's doing a little thing. I, yeah. I think I missed a few Fridays, so I'm still on <gasps> Dell's campaign. I think Dell is leading <gasps> Succession right oh. now. Is yes. what is happening? I yeah, I, I got so focused on on um, crops and uh, making <laughs> money. You forgot to <laughs> go. I skipped a few Friday nights, so I'm behind. Laura. I'm still in the Succession campaign, uh, but. The reason I played Fields of Mystery all weekend was um, because I spent a day away from home playing a different game and I was really yeah. tired and I needed a break. I can't tell you what I think about it at all, but I am <laughs> allowed to tell you that I was playing Dragon Age The Veil Guard. Um, if you are following it, you may have seen YouTubers, influencers, potentially other journalists, folks who were at the same event posting about the fact that they were at the event. That's what we were all allowed to say at this point is that we were there and we did get to be hands on and play it. 
uh, but it'll be next week when everybody actually gets to say what we thought of it and, you know, what we got to play, uh, how much, all of those good details. So I will be very much looking forward to telling people what I think of it uh, when that rolls around next week. But then until we get to that part, let's go grab Tim and talk about the state of microtransactions. Okay, Tim, so you have been like simmering to talk about microtransactions for months. You have been waiting for this. And we finally, when Molly suggested like, hey, should we talk about like microtransaction stuff? I was like, yes, we should. And we can't ask anyone to be here except for Tim, who has so many feelings about it. Imagine being the shame of being the microtransaction guy. That's like the speciality (laughs) you're brought on for. That's a low ebb. We won't, we won't call you out for what you've spent on microtransactions. You can do that if you choose, oh, I, I'm but willing, mostly... I'm willing to spill, don't worry. <laughs> uh, but mostly just the person who's, like, most um, astounded by where microtransactions have ended up, like, uh, and, and kind of the state of things right now. Because as, as we've pointed out, microtransactions aren't very micro anymore, for one thing. <laughs> I mean, I- yeah, yeah, I love to be pious about it, but um, the truth is I'm fascinated by it because I so consistently interact with it because I'm so yeah. easily kind of uh, huckstered into buying <laughs> new outfits and stuff. Um, but yeah, we I think what this came from was we were gonna we were gonna run a series of articles on the site about microtransactions and how they're kind of like they, they seem to have like crossed a Rubicon into like this new level of pricing and kind of no mm-hmm. one had really noticed it beyond the kind of odd article kind of going, wow, this one outfit in game X or Y is like 20 bucks. Um, and I was looking at it this morning um, because the original thing this all stemmed from, right, was the Oblivion horse, right, back in yeah. 2006, which I think was – sure. From looking up, I think it was like two dollars back in the day and people were like, two dollars. Was it really? <laughs> two dollars? Yeah. Like, two dollars for a yeah. horse? How will I send my children to college? That I don't have. <laughs> um, and I looked it up. Microtransaction and inflation is real. <laughs> How a horse armor would cost 20 bucks in today's market. Well, almost literally. So I'm not like a maths guy, as you probably know. Um, I think by inflation, because you're starting with quite a small amount, well, from please. 2006 to now, it'd get up to about three and a half bucks. Okay, so it's okay. like more, but like, all right, I can afford the horse still. Um, but the reality is, if you, do you, how much do you two think a horse... Like a new horse costs in Diablo, which is one of the games I play. The, this oh is where you noticed it, right? Was Diablo is what really like pissed it's, you off last year? The, it's one of the places. Hey, uh, I want to say ten bucks, but it's it's definitely more than that. Oh, oh no. like yeah, fifteen, eighteen. It is about fifteen. Yeah, De- depending on whether the horse has like animated, like fire, uh, fire parcel, or, or I mean, I, particle I, I might go for more. <laughs> and the, the crazy thing as well with a game like Diablo is like your character on screen or your horse is like what 25 pixels high or something yeah like, it's <laughs> very hard to play like and look don't get me wrong these are good looking horses there is like some of Blizzard's finest artists working on these $15 horses and have I bought one of course I have more than one. Oh no <laughs> oh my god yeah i think we i think we are you you're with friends here because i'm pretty sure we are all quite guilty of spending an egregious amount of money on microtransactions in our live service game of choice who is without sin molly (laughs) no um but i i did have this realization i was i was playing final fantasy 14 with a group of people uh last week and you know, I would like throw out an emote or I would like put a glam on. They'd be like, oh my God, where did you get that? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's the cash shop. <laughs> like, the, the answer like almost every single time was, oh, it's the cash shop. Um, and how do your friends react then? Because they kind of, because I've had the same experience loads of times. You're like, <coughs> I bought it. <coughs> and you, you feel embarrassed right. saying it. And so people like in my group as well. And there's always like a pause where you can hear the other person judging you, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There really is like, oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah, it was like five pounds. It's fine. Mm -hmm. For an emote of me cheersing with a tankard, like, (laughs) that I never use. I like never use it. But I was like, this is a cool emote. I'll, I'll like drop like half of my subscription on it, I guess. Yeah. that, That does feel like a little bit of judgment sometimes. But I think in Final Fantasy 14 as well, 
there's just like a list of cash shop emotes that everyone has like by default as well it's more so maybe like outfits and stuff they're starting to get quite expensive that's where like people are a bit like oh and also there's like emotes tied to like 300 dollar statues oh my which, gosh what yeah, is, oh, yeah like, 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 uh, like merch oh, statues <laughs> Emblems in Destiny is the same thing. Like the game has like literally hundreds of emblems, which are just you know like a an icon that displays next to your name. Um, and there was one which you could only get in Destiny Two if you bought the Savathun like plastic statue. Of, like I mean, I'm, I'm a man, and it's let's say politely mid forties. <laughs> the statue was the statue was three hundred dollars, but had this like to my mind stylish hive theme uh, emblem. I'm not really like a big emblem collector generally. And like that was the one time where my uh, other half, Rach, was like, "No, this there's a line here. You are not buying like a three hundred dollar statue just for a, a rectangular piece of pixel art." Um, I was in the background here trying to figure out how much the mounts for comparison in Elder Scrolls Online cost because I know I've bought they they have three different bear mounts. Obviously, I own all three of them. When they came out with a polar bear, I needed that too. Are you kidding me? Uh, the cave bear, regular old grizzly bear, is eighteen hundred crowns. Which, from what I can tell, the fifteen hundred crown pack is fourteen ninety nine. So a mounted ESO costs more than fifteen dollars, like oh, somewhere around Scrolls. eighteen. Yeah, ESO does the thing where you have to buy yes. currency to buy my. Uh, uh, yes. I mean, that's like, that's really prevalent now, right? Like the the use of these made up like Hearthstone has like rune stones, Diablo has like platinum, Destiny you has. You can't just silver. buy the thing; you have to you buy the pack buy of the currency, amount, right? There's always like, mm-hmm. oh, if you buy a thousand platinum, you get one like one hundred. Oh, like thanks fucking much. Like, what am I going to buy with the extra <laughs> one hundred? That's not even going to buy me a hoof of a horse, much less a kind of <laughs> a full equine. Um. But it, of course, that's done to disguise to you how much you're spending. You're like, well, it's yeah. nine hundred platinum. Like, how much could that be, Michael? Ten dollars? Like, um, it, and it and kind of yeah, that's the real thing that like sucks to feel after all these years, right? Is because we know we know all the ways we're being worked over because that's how that's what this whole thing is. That's how microtransactions started. Was yeah, they're they're just tiny little transactions, and then so they add up, and suddenly you've spent whatever mm-hmm. buying your currency in a mobile game. I think I would have to research more before I open my mouth and say this, but I feel like micro, like the concept of microtransactions took off in mobile gaming when smartphones like were on the rise, right? Like uh, it was not, it was not burst from PC gaming. Pay for um, extra lives, pay for yeah, more energy. To more, it's do always more, more energy. Yeah, but so that you can play more. Like, in mainstream PC gaming, I feel like there's there's long been this discourse. And before I get to this, by the way, I want to say, like, if you're listening to this and I'm thinking, fuck this guy, he's the problem. People like him <laughs> spending money is what has created this situation. You are correct, and I get it. Like, I, I really <laughs> think. There is, like, a flip side argument of, like, it's, it's the whales of whom I probably am who kind of are funding the game. But even that, I think, is pretty... I find it hard to justify on that basis. All I can say is I'm weak, and that's like uh, <laughs> I'm weak. And I have no children, therefore I can afford to buy horses. Um, <laughs> but I'm weak. I have no children on whom to impart my lands, so I must spend yeah. it on Which digital I horses. My uh, estate, my enormous stable of digital horses to when I pass. <laughs> no one. Um, but yeah, there seems to have been. Yeah, it's, here was my point. So there was a, there's a discourse in PC gaming of like, well, so long as it doesn't affect the actual core gameplay, right? You're not buying power, which is kind of what you're doing in those mobile games. So you're buying something right. that affects gameplay. Then does it really matter, right? The people who are like idiots can spend and the people who don't want to spend, like Phil on our team, proudly says to me in a very judgmental way, <laughs> I've never spent a single pound in the Destiny <laughs> shop. And I'm like, oh, good for you, Phil. But also like, don't your characters look worse than mine? Like they do. <laughs> Like I've in- I've inspected you in game and like you look fine, but like I've got some some fancy shit. And I find you to be wanting, <laughs> sir. <laughs> well, this is the thing, right? So like so many games as well, like fashion is a thing, it's and it kind of sucks game. that you're paying for the better looking stuff. But like, look, the the outfits in Diablo, the paid ones, they're in. Like, can you build a good looking character with the base items? One hundred percent, and they give you like tons and tons of. Them. But do they also go look? Here's a rogue 
wreathed in fire and she's got like an animated bow and a really cool hat on and am I buying that? Like, of course I am. Like, they, they just they just dropped in Diablo like a set of like um, WoW themed cosmetics. Oh, yeah. I'm like, try not buying the Sylvanas one if you like playing Rock. I just try. <laughs> it's hard. <clears throat> yeah, that's. So, um, um, oh, go ahead, Mike. I just say, Tim, so your kryptonite is it? Di- is it Destiny or is it Diablo or is it Bow? Like it's any, your, it's any game where like I want to. <laughs> oh, like so, so the mate, the only one I've. That's not even true, even as I think about it. So, like, in in Hearthstone, which is a card game, uh, hopefully, obviously, that I play, I was a bit of a sucker for buying the golden animated cards, or at least, like, buying enough mm-hmm. packs that I could dust cards so that I could then craft the golden ones. But then they released this new tier of cards called Diamond, which are, like, f- as the name suggests, they kind of look like they have a diamond frame. They're fully animated, so the character will, like, pop out of the card and stuff. And I've kind of drawn the line there because... The pricing of that is so egregious. Like, I had to look it up now. So, like, to buy a diamond card, uh, the bundle they have in the store is, like, 6,000 rune shards or whatever it is, rune stones, which works out. You get two other kind of nice cards with it, but not diamond, and it's £53 for three cards in a card game. That's so much And I know, like, Magic the Gathering stuff is expensive, but this isn't stuff you can trade, right? This is, like... Blizzard won't even let you give your account to someone if you if you literally die going back to the previous example. <laughs> like fifty three pounds for three cards. That was when I was like, That's there too- has to be a line somewhere and like this and the plastic statue are it. But actually, um, if I can give one more anecdote. So I was interviewing mm-hmm. the lead designer of Hearthstone at the time, uh, a few years ago, a guy called Dean Ayala. And I always tried to give Dean a few like kind of tough questions because we kind of got on and it's you know, made for a better interview. And I said, Dean can you guess how much I've spent on Hearthstone? I've been I've been playing for like at the time like eight years. Um, I I buy the kind of bundle and some other kind of stuff. What do you think it works out to? See, well, see if you can guess. Oh, oh gosh, no. no idea. Eight uh, years. Okay, eight, eight years. Eight years. There's like multiple expansions a year, uh, and a kind of. I'll give you an example. So, like the an, an eighty card <laughs> card bundle might cost you like forty five pounds. Okay. Sorry, an 80 pack, not cupped. Okay, okay. 45 pounds. That's like what in dollars? Like $60? Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, these like, days, okay. with this it's probably more like 52 or something. <laughs> I'm um, saying okay. over 800, under 1,000. It's over 1,000. It's over 1,000, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Is it? Okay, hold on. Let me do some math. So eight years, if you're doing like, you're spending maybe like a pound a day. Okay. <laughs> I've probably undersold like how many packs I was buying. Oh no! Okay, I'm gonna say that you were spending like a pound a day. So over eight years, like three hundred. I can't do maths. Like three, six, nine, twelve, <laughs> eighteen, twenty-one. I want to say like like two thousand one hundred pounds. You're very close. I think it worked out to about two and a half. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And I, so I said to Dean, like, are you shocked by that? And by the way, he did look shocked. He was like, <laughs> I, could see, I could see the PR person kind of go, I think we should move on to another line of questioning. And then he did come back and he said, he said to me, do you think you have had uh, fun with the game during that time that justifies that amount of money? And I think like for a lot of people, the answer would be like, fuck no, you could have bought like a used car. Or, but I don't, I don't want a used car, to be fair. <laughs> um, my, my answer was kind of like yes and also like who who shall I blame other than myself like mm-hmm. you know what I mean I kind of the, the thing you don't kind of notice is how quickly it's totting up I actually started yeah. like um, when I came to America I started having to do my own taxes and like looking through what I was spending each year and, and other than like sort of like Postmates and Uber the thing that kept popping up was like Steam and um, Blizzard and I was like oh Jesus and I actually you would add it up at the end of the year and it was like it's rough yeah. Um, but then, but then, look, games is probably like my biggest uh, leisure pursuit. I don't spend a lot on much else. Look how I'm dressed. Um, <laughs> you don't golf, you know. You don't, like, you don't spend that, on don't tea golf. time. Yeah. When I was back in England, I you know I used to have a season ticket for football and travel for that was expensive. But I don't know. Like I mostly stay in right, and play video games. So like, <laughs> if I want to have like a fancier set of trousers, does I in not a video game? 
<laughs> yeah, not, yeah, really not in real life. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing, though. Like when you say about you don't realize how quickly it adds up. That's how they get you, right? Like yeah. it's like, oh, here's this like five dollar pack that's like kind of cheap, and wow, you get these little things, and then they start throwing like more of these little five dollar or ten dollar packs at you, and it's like, oh, well, it's like just five dollars. But then if you're spent, if you're buying like even like five of those five dollar packs that's like 25 bucks that you've spent already they do it in a in nikkei like the mobile gacha game that i play <laughs> you'll hit a milestone and they'll be like oh cool you hit this milestone here's this special limited two hour pack there's like eight bucks and you get these these items and it's like oh cool but then you know if i buy like you you hit a lot of milestones in that game, okay? They give you they give you like one of these two hour bonus packs for everything. So it's like you buy like ten of those. That's eighty bucks. That's eighty yeah. freaking bucks. Like, do you feel so like you fast. suffer from that kind of FOMO side of it a bit as well? If they go like, well, this this uh, set of trousers is going away at the end of the week. Like, yeah. you better you better make a decision now. Does that yeah, kind of hit you? They've they've been doing it in in Tekken, which is kind of. Tekken 8 is where I have officially drawn the line is that they are like throwing like a bunch of like cosmetics at you and it's like I don't want to buy that like I don't want to buy that I like as much as I love this bikini set that's like going away in like two weeks I also don't want to don't want to buy it just because but I do definitely get FOMO I am 100 (laughs) percent get FOMO for limited time stuff because like what if it goes away and then I'm like damn I wish I I wish I got that like yeah and it's usually obviously. like an hour after it's gone you're like no I did I did want the, uh, yeah. the outfit that made me like a tree when <laughs> I, I'm playing Druid like that, that would have been sick <laughs> so Molly you drew the line at Tekken um, yeah. Tim have you had any game where you're like no nah, I'm not spending here like this that isn't is, worth it for me Stone. His Hearthstone Diamond card, right? Well, the yeah, I guess. Card, yeah, I also played like a bunch of Hell Divers, and mm, okay. people really praised that. I think probably rightly for sort of saying the, you know, you could get by without the war bonds. Although that did seem to become increasingly a big part of you know what the updates were, but I didn't find the um, the sets of armor, which did have practical gameplay benefits as well. Some of them. But I didn't find them like compelling enough that I felt any desire to really. They just kind of weren't cool enough for me to kind of want to collect them or put together an outfit. Like I never had a beyond beyond slapping on the stuff that I thought was useful or kind of looked slightly better. It really the problem is like Bungie's artists and Blizzard's artists are so good at making stuff which looks cool. Yeah. And, like, you know, if you're into video games, you're probably into like graphics and design and imagery. So like you're kind of already like a sucker for. <laughs> what they're selling um going back to what you were saying about fire the molly like so did i think all of the stores that i kind of interact with have this egregious thing of going uh, of like rotating the shop right oh, so like yeah yeah i'm like this Hate is a that. digital platform You're like this should be like the kind of argos catalog to use an english example or the, a walmart catalog where you can see everything at all times right why should it be limited whatsoever other than to create this false sense of scarcity yeah. where like Oh man! If I miss that weapon skin, then it will be gone. But yeah, yeah. another you know. example of like knowing exactly how they're getting you, and like you're still prey to and it, still like falling we, for it anyway. Yeah, oh. we we understand how these things work and why, and yet we are human beings with horrible little monkey brains and can't say no <laughs> to the false scarcity of the trousers, Tim. We can't do it. But yeah, it remi- no. that reminds me of. Um, a really good insight that someone else from the Hearthstone scene sent me when I was at a tournament and we were talking about the cost of the game. And he said, you, you know, look, people often will, will blame the devs for the cost of microtransactions or they'll go like, oh, sure, it's, yeah. you know, it's it's scummy. But it's not like the lead narrative designer or the kind of level <laughs> designer is setting these prices. When the prices are being set at most big publishers, it will be done by like a separate business intelligence unit. And that unit will be gathering data at all times on like what is the exact point a person like you who has X hours in the games stops spending? Like what what are the kind of prices? What what's your kind of tolerance for being pushed as high as you can go? And their goal is to get you at the exact nexus of like, this sucks, I'm spending too much, but I'm gonna keep playing and spending. 
because they don't want to push you over that into the fuck this game or like I'm never spending anymore because you've just you, you've <laughs> gone too far. They want to keep you at the exact like stress point of pain of like oh this, which is why we all feel the same way, right? Which is like yeah. this is too expensive, but I'm still doing. Or, or at least those of us who spend, like I appreciate most people probably don't spend at all, but, and that, you know, that sucks. Like, is that, is there another world where we hadn't gone down the horse armor route really? and in all these games, all this cool, um, cosmetics and, and kind of skins existed, but you were kind of getting them for beating raids or kind of doing in-game challenges or being a god in PVP, right? And that's how you dropped the new outfit. Like in, in Destiny, there have been like, you know, cosmetics you could earn from, doing cool things and those stuff did feel more valuable like the emblems i wear that i actually kind of feel proud of are like ones for you know completing a day one raid or um you know getting the god slayer title or whatever whereas the stuff you can kind of buy yes it can look cool but like think how much think how much prouder you would feel of that armor if you knew it had come from uh doing something an achievement Literally yeah anything. It's not, um not twenty. You were bucks. kind of saying this before, Tim, about um how we've just accepted kind of this devil's bargain. We're like, it's okay as long as it's just for cosmetics, and we all sort of have this feeling that like we we shouldn't have ever said that because it turns out it's not true. Like we we were like, you know, we just don't want pay to win. We don't want pay to win stuff. We don't want to pay for like to have a better gun in Call of Duty. I'm like, okay. Fair enough. But also it turns out like you just pay for the cosmetics. And that's as you're pointing out, Tim, that's like a lot of your enjoyment of the game is like you like making your your character exactly how you want, comparing yourself to your friends, the fashion in we just talked about fashion in games, Molly, being the end game of like the true end game of Dark Souls is fashion and like of MMOs as well. Um yeah. yeah, so like you're not yeah you're not paying for an, a better gun but you're still paying for like a better experience to like look like a winner right <laughs> to, like, pay for a prettier gun. Stuff is like sorry molly you were saying i just think you pay for a prettier gun yeah it might yeah. not be yeah. better but, but, but it's prettier stuff is like a thin end of the wedge right because mm-hmm. and, and will be eroded still over time because if we've seen anything from from the last kind of 15 years is that uh, uh, kind of like what we consider acceptable gradually gets kind of like chipped away at. Yeah. And if you look at, so, so in Dusty, they started doing a thing where for the annual expansion, if you pre-ordered it, you could get um, one of the new exotic weapons like six months early. And it's like $100, right, for the for to pre-order. So people were saying, well, this gun is effectively $100. Now that kind of didn't matter. So the, the gun they did... Um, for Beyond Light was one called Quicksilver Storm and it was kind of this this auto rifle it was good but it wasn't kind of like crazy um, and then I think they either buffed it or they released like a catalyst which is a thing which improves it and the gun did become pretty meta it was like very strong um, now did that matter arguably not because like the AI isn't going to start writing reddit posts about how it's getting you know beaten by this new gun but it still, for sure, was like a power spike you could kind of effectively purchase. Right. Um, and once you've done that once, yeah. then the, the gate's open, right? Like it, you uh-huh. just kind of, you, you, you've rendered it acceptable. Because people always will say like, well, this is, you know, this is where I'm out. And I'm sure some people do dip out as a result. But um, all, it, all it needs is for people to keep spending. Um, which is where you kind of come back to what we were saying in the start of like, yes, you can blame people like me, but then there's this kind of weird thing of like, this is a source of revenue that games are now built around. Like it's factored in when they're Mm -hmm. creating the game that we will make X and Y from this, which I guess makes it interesting why some other games will kind of like counter promote themselves as as like, we're not doing paid MTX or we're not kind of, that's become a thing. I think more in, um, did, did, did BG3 do any of this stuff? No, right? No. No. <laughs> they just did a Kickstarter and yeah. they said no DLC and whatever else. Yeah, none of it. Mm-hmm. Which, Which I I respect. I respect yeah. that. I think <laughs> coming out and being like, we're not doing it is is good. But I but also... I they're an outlier in so many ways, right? Like there's a reason outlier. they can do that, right? And I, I think as well, like I... Obviously, I wouldn't <laughs> like it more, but I would not even respect it more i would just appreciate it more <laughs> if maybe like developers were a little more up 
upfront about it sometimes. Uh, Tekken 8 is another example of this, is the game launched. You know, I reviewed the game, uh, had heard nothing about microtransactions, had not been told anything about microtransactions. The game launched. Everyone was like, this is cool. Oh, like, there's not a lot of customization. That's weird. And then, like, a month after yeah, the game had launched... Changed. Yeah, like a month after the game had launched, they were like, by the way, we're launching a cash shop. And then I can't remember if it, was a, if it was at the same time or a little bit after that. They were like, hey, we're putting in a battle pass. And they had had like a year of marketing prior to this. Not once had they mentioned microtransactions. Mm. Not once was it mentioned in a review guide. They gave it an entire month before they released it and it well before they even announced it and it felt like really slimy it felt mm. like it like felt very icky and i know yeah. that i wasn't the only one that felt that way a lot of other people were really mad about that as well the fact that they had not even mentioned it until it was a month after release and everyone had already bought the game like <laughs> it, yeah it's just something you that guys felt feel like right. that's from a standard practice now because i mean i don't review games really these days but I can imagine, like, you usually can't see what the kind of right. NTX side of it looks like. Sure. So I feel like on the site, we'll quite often, around a big launch, kind of go, it's almost like a separate story. We'll kind of dig into, like, what does the monetization look like on this game? Yeah. And is it shitty? And how are people reacting to it? But it is, yeah. it's still like a big, the kind of. Yeah, it's a huge part of the experience. And yeah, you yeah. don't, you almost never have access to it ahead of time. Yeah, for those of us. No, that have, but I feel like yeah, a review copy least, or something. There's at least some kind of knowledge that it's coming a lot of the time. I feel like yeah, either, there's either there's either the, big, the part of the UI that says shop and you just can't get to it, so you don't know how much they're going to cost you, but you yeah. know it's going to be there. Or like you know, there's like they've already got some ready to come, like with launch or like just mm -hmm. after launch. Like normally, you know something is coming. It's not normally a month of silence followed yeah. by a very sneaky, by the way, we're adding this. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of what also put me off. Wanting yeah, you felt to... like it was a bit of a rug pull. Yeah, it did feel like a bit of a rug pull. And I know that when they announced it as well, I know like quite a lot of people were saying the same, same thing, thing on like Reddit and stuff as well. So yeah, that is that is the one thing that I... that I There's no need to be sneaky about it these days. Everyone does it. Yeah, it annoys people, but I feel like it's going to annoy people more if you if you're sneaky about it. Like, Just why you like the gotcha game, Smalley? <laughs> you know exactly what but, kind of monster that's, they yeah, are. That's why I play my gotcha games because I know I know what's coming. They, I I respect them and they respect my bank account. So it's it does fine. Feel it does feel better when it's like an upfront, like I guess the Mihoyo games and stuff. Like you just you know what yeah. you're getting into. I mean, going back to that BG three example. Like you said, Lauren, they, they did so many things differently and most of those can be tracked back to the fact they are an independent um, uh, studio exactly. and can therefore, and, and have, I think consistently chosen not to kind of, um, like in every case, do the most predatory thing possible, which is kind of the rule roughly elsewhere as it seems. And, and fundamentally, yeah. without getting too kind of like into the politics of it that is just like capitalism if you have shareholders and you say to your shareholders hey there's this enormous stream of revenue over here we've just chosen not to uh um exploit it they would be like well are you fucking idiots and by the way we own the company right we would <laughs> and like by that. the way yes you are going to <laughs> we would like that money very much please yeah so please switch the tap on um so it's very hard. It's like a Pandora's boxing, right? Once it's opened, like that world I described earlier of like all this stuff's in the bling game, like you're never going to go back to it. Unfortunately, it's very hard to see. Right. It's very hard to see a, a way almost any of this gets unpicked or becomes fairer. And kind of, I feel like they've swapped really because, because regulation came into the loot box stuff. Yeah. And it really got clamped down on like in a lot of countries. I feel like they kind of moved from that to this of like, yeah. Just let people choose what they want, but let, we're going to charge them, pay an exorbitant, way we're more, an exorbitant yeah, amount yeah. for it. That that to me is the worrying thing of like how the price. Well, there are lots of things are worrying, but like how the price has just been allowed to jump to this new kind of norm, right? Largely unremarked. I mean, we like I said, we've written about it, but it seems to me that kind of twenty dollar mark has become standard for a lot of stuff, like a Destiny two 
outfit, if you pay with real world money, is about twenty dollars for the good ones, like the crossovers with Assassin's Creed and God of War, stuff cost you twenty bucks per character, by the way. Um, and likewise, and that's so much. That's so, so much. Yeah, much. Think, like, <laughs> there's so much debate spent about, and I see people say this all the time on Reddit of like. The base game is sixty dollars, and you're paying twenty exactly. of that for like one outfit. It's like it's, a- it's very, and people feel like, oh, sixty dollars is too much for a game, which we can. That's a whole other discussion. Um, maybe there should be more, and then you wouldn't have to do this stuff. But the answer is everyone would just do both. But yeah, I don't, I don't see how you ever like row back from this. Like, why is how did we how did we set that price? Why is that yeah. a, a new price? Just well, constantly like you said, Tim. It. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's the data analytics. They have us by the yeah. numbers. Like we can't, like it's it's very much one of those. Um, you know, you can't. It's hard to dismantle a system with individual action kind yeah. of a situation, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Tim, you can stop spending on Hearthstone, but who freaking cares? Blizzard. Does. Like, yeah, it doesn't feel like. <laughs> like you know, when I see people going like, "That's it, I'm leaving the game," right? I'm like, "Okay, good for you. You didn't need to." Like, You're just, not going to make a difference. No, unfortunately, yeah, because yeah, yeah that's they. Kind they, of, they they have all the numbers saved up. They know exactly how much people will spend. Like, and yeah, they, the, all the information is there. But, yeah, but, but here's where I think that is bad for, for Ben is that on a long enough timeline, I, f- I feel like it really is poisoning goodwill towards the whole well, hobby, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, just, for sure. People genuinely feel like either they're being trapped into engagement with the game if it's not spending, like they're being kind of put on these kind of hamster wheels, especially with kind of the life service games that I play where they just log want in, you log, log in, in. log in. Because if you're logged in, you might spend at some point, right? And uh, you can see it in the discourse, right? It has become increasingly confrontational over time um, towards developers, oftentimes, like, as I said earlier, who won't be the ones even coming up with some of this shit. They'll just be kind of right, trying right. to make cool stuff. Yeah. And I, f- I just feel like for the vibes in games, it's going to be just bad, like long term. People are just yeah. like mad all the time about, they feel like they've been scammed a bit, right? It is kind of, it feels like a real monkey paw situation when you say yeah. about the loot boxes kind of being like graduated out as well. Everyone was mad. Like it happened in Overwatch, right? Everyone was mad about loot boxes and then Overwatch 2 got rid of loot boxes and brought in very expensive skins and battle passes instead and then everyone was like oh shit actually loot boxes weren't weren't that bad (laughs) but it's like you know when you say as well about people paying 60 bucks for the game and then 20 bucks for a skin like it i think i feel like it used to be you would either pay full price for the game and then pay a very nominal amount on top of that for microtransactions or you would have the game for free and then you would spend an egregious yeah, amount yeah, yeah. on the microtransactions. Too many games want to have cake both. And but yeah. now it's both. Now, now it's you have to buy the sixty dollar game and the twenty dollar out. And it's like and seventy dollars now. It's like you you're buying pay. the seventy dollar game, and you're now buying the twenty dollar, forty dollar, fifty dollar skins or cosmetics or other bits and pieces like on top of that. And it's like mm-hmm. or battle when, pass or yeah. Like when does it stop? I I spent I paid three hundred pounds for a Tekken eight collector's edition and then Mm -hmm. they want they want to release cosmetics like every few weeks like i think it's like once a month or something they want to release cosmetics every single month and make me pay for a battle pass on top of that no so something that has really stuck in the destiny community's craw is that a few years ago now they i think it was one of the first paid ornaments they did and it was for so they they, they surprise launched this mission where like you you were in the world. It was on a Friday afternoon. I remember because I had the day off and I was like calling into work to tell people about it. You would just be in the world and this portal opened up if you did a certain kind of things around a public event. And if you went through the portal, it took you into this whole new mission. No one had known anything about that was kind of like spooky. It re- rewarded a new sniper rifle or re- reprised exotic sniper rifle at the end. It was very kind of cool, amazing music, really stylish, and you're like. It was one of the most exciting moments in the game, just something happening out of nowhere on a Friday and people discovering it and rushing to kind of Discord and Reddit to tell friends and people posting videos, how do you do it and stuff. And if you beat the mission, they would sell you um, this new ornament right, for the for the, for the the gun, do the skin. And I can't remember how much it was, whether it was like six bucks or whatever, but let's say it was six bucks. And that drew some controversy at the time and Bungie came out and said, hey, look, if we're going to build stuff for you, like this mission that's kind of 
a surprise and like outside the normal um, kind of workflow of the game, then we can pay for it with the revenue that you're generating buying the skin. And people we have like, to sell you the souvenir at the end of the ride. Yeah. We got to do it. Pe- people were like, mm, I guess I did really like that mission. So if you're going to build us a lot more cool stuff, I'm kind of okay with buying the skin. And like fast forward to another like five years later and it's like, hey, oh, here's was- like 60 fucking skins that are all $6 and people going, where's my fucking mission? Like, <laughs> meanwhile, in the background, it comes out, Bungie's like redeployed a third of the studio to come up with like weird incubation projects that they've since cancelled. And you're like, well, is that my, is that my gun money funding that? My, my, <laughs> my horizon ball? And it creates this kind of like weird, again, you feel like, whether it's correct or not, you certainly feel like it's a scam. Like you're being kind mm-hmm. of not told the complete truth of like mm-hmm. how this stuff was done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lauren. What do you guys? Oh, go ahead, Molly. I don't want to hear about us. You have been very, very, very <laughs> quiet. <laughs> this entire podcast, you need to start yapping. That's so sorry. up. Tell us the truth. What is what is your experience? Because you're also an MMO gamer, which I feel like is, yeah. you know, the Guild Wars cash shop is cash yeah. shopping. I, well, like I, I wanna, said, I, I want to know. I bought bears. I bought three different bears, a black bear, a brown bear, and a polar bear in Elder Scrolls Online. I, they they're black just black reskins. Mold. Huh? Are no, they the, Tim, they're more, just a different they're, color. Yes, they are, and this is very important because have you ever looked at a polar bear before? The silhouette of a polar bear's face is actually very different from a grizzly different. bear, which is different from a black bear. Those are more similar, but a polar bear snout super, super different. No, it's just a reskinned black bear, and that's fine if you can't make a whole new bear model. It's fine. It's fine. But also, I bought all three bears. So if you guys I didn't guess. Lauren really likes bears. I like bears. <laughs> Uh, so I, I did that in Elder Scrolls Online. I've definitely spent money on like cash up stuff in Guild Wars 2. I've lately, Molly, I've owned up to you. I've spent money in Sky Children of the Light because not only do they have cosmetics, but they have like limited time events and like, you know, there's there's stuff you can, and there's like effectively sort of a battle pass like system. They have seasons of content um, and what else? Uh, I think that the, the one I'm like least proud of is that at one point I did spend some money in Fallout Shelter, um, <laughs> the base building mobile spinoff for Fallout that later came to PC. It's now on Steam. Actually, a very great game. I have to tell you, great mobile game. You build your little shelter. You, it, like I used spreadsheets to like design how I was gonna like oh add my rooms to my my shelter, and they do have an energy system where um, it takes. A certain resource, I think, was was to like uh, do the like in game quests to like send people off on a thing. And I did at one point uh, spend some money on like Nuka Colas to like so do are we quests talking or some shit? Double digits overall, triple digits, oh, quadruple overall? digits. We'll never know. I've never tallied it up, but like never over triple digits. Like I've probably spent yeah. like a couple hundred bucks in a game i don't know which one like maybe in guild wars maybe i'm not sure though i don't know <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm kind of a penny pincher i i do get fomo but i usually wind up just logging in a lot i think um i'm proud but of i you. am susceptible to fashion but and have you bought something and then like immediately like looked at it on your character and re- regretted it yeah definitely i bought Where? oh Today, yeah i think so hi Final Fantasy XIV has this problem where I'll like one specific item out of a cash shop set, yeah. and yeah. it doesn't let you. It doesn't let you buy the individual items. No, you'll you be have like, to I need buy these gloves. Out. Out. <laughs> gloves will complete the outfit. The rest yeah. of it is trash. I'm never going to use it, but it's still twenty dollars. So it's really like, and because I play a cl- I play a race as well. I uh, I play Viera and. Half of the hats do not show up on Viera. So if I'm buying an outfit that has a hat, there is a good chance that it will not show up on my character. No. Because for some reason, Viera has been in the game for five years and Square Enix still won't model the fucking hats for them. So I'm like spending 15 bucks, not just for a pair of gloves, but also for a hat that I can't fucking wear. Is it like a clip? <laughs> thing? Do they have like big ears? Uh huh. Yeah, the the bunny ear girls. The, the bunny. Yeah. yeah, the bunny. It's the. Yeah. It must be the. You can't ears. possibly model around those. Can't no. do it. Can't, do guys... can't even. We can't just cut them off either. You know. 
No, they can't tuck them in. That would be ridiculous. What do you think is like the most MTX monetized supported genre? Like, is there one particular genre? I mean, we've been talking about MMOs, the cash shop in an MMO, like notorious. Obviously, those are huge. Shooters. I was kind of, huh? You think so? Shooters. Yeah. yeah, I think shooters it's, and I think MMOs. It's, yeah, shooters and MMOs for sure. But it's also like one game, which is a uh, Star Citizen, right? Where you can buy <laughs> you can buy a ship for a game, game that basically isn't isn't good or slash doesn't work <laughs> properly for like ten grand, right? I don't think I'm getting that wrong. I think there's like you can spend. I think that's like the, what? the completionist bundle. Right. I think I think that's the one that has everything yeah. in it. Is like. 10 grand yes yeah, star Remember? citizen is, is is in a class of its own at this point i feel i don't know how like cloud imperium continues to get people to pay <laughs> there's <laughs> there's things. a new ship uh, this was from 2023 a ship bundle that costs an astonishing forty eight thousand dollars what <laughs> that, that includes oh. 175 vessels see tim you're Whoa. not a whale that's no, not that's, that's all fine yeah. Break out the credit card. We're good. Did, didn't Star Citizen players spend like $2,000 for a blueprint of a ship that hadn't even been modeled yet as well? I feel like that, that's also that a thing. That rings true, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that seems likely. <laughs> Bali yeah. pointed out that uh, Chris Livingston did that 10 most dubious in-game purchases oh, thing back in 2017, or maybe either you or Tim uh, wrote that down. And yeah, the uh, I- Star Citizen land deeds are in there. Yeah. And... Yeah. Uh, TF2 keys are in there also. Speaking of yeah, like, you know, keys. the loot boxes yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. That's a CSGO thing as well, right? Is it? C- sorry, and CS2. That's a CS thing as well, right? Where you mm-hmm. can get a crate in game and then you pay real money. Yes. To buy a key to, to get the keys it, right? to open My it. experience yeah. with those games is like zero, but that, ugh, I don't like that. Because it's like giving you half of it, right? And it's like, oh, look at this thing. Look at this thing in your inventory. Don't you don't you want to open it? You want to open it so bad. And yeah, I'm like, is- I, I would be buying keys. We forgot how I many of these games. things Valve pioneered. I mean, we, I was gonna say, yeah. we talk about good guy Valve a lot, but like, yeah, they, they were on the ground floor of some stuff that we don't like. Like, you know, yeah. the, the real money trading with items, the marketplace. Cards. The marketplace, yeah. the the keys, all that stuff. Like that's that's yeah. Valve through and through. I think we we published a story um, in the last couple of weeks. I think Rich wrote it, which was about that. Like, was it the guy who was like the in game the, the in house economist at Valve? He kind of figured that oh. he, with the creation of like Team Fortress MTX, I guess, had sort of pioneered. <laughs> a fundamental change to the way like digital economies worked and how like everything now is like online is a transaction kind of owned by the person who hasn't actually created it, it, it was a whole thesis basically of like right i can't really get into it, but like, the, fundamentally the economics of how we interact with each other had changed and that team it was team fortress's fault um but yeah you're right i mean like, skins costing real world money is a counter-strike thing that that's certainly a Mm-hmm. If we, it, I'm, sorry, word for it. You know, <laughs> I'm just thinking back to history. Like we started with the horse armor, yeah, the uh, apparently two dollar horse armor. I thought it must have been more expensive that we all got so angry about it. But we went from the horse armor, then we got loot boxes, then we got battle passes. Now we've got gotcha <laughs> games, which are just evolved bat or I mean loot boxes. They're and they're now just, we have loot I'm boxes not stronger. Not because I don't think I would enjoy the games. I think I would enjoy Genshin quite a lot. My my colleague on GR Austin plays it, and we talk about it quite a bit. And he's like, I a matter know, of getting like, the genre that's going to get you. He's got like yeah. every waifu you can collect, and gets very excited when a new one comes out. Uh-huh. And I don't know. I don't know if he spends on it, but I assume he does. Oh, I see. He I would imagine. Bed, I would imagine so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have definitely spent money on gacha games to get the mm-hmm. character that I wanted when. When all of my free resources that I grinded in game have dried up, and it's either pay money or go without, I have de- I have definitely um, paid money. Now, now you that. describe that, Molly. That kind of I could either keep grinding or go without. I yeah. really remember the first when I first kind of got involved with this shit. It was when when I moved to America like ten years ago and was like living on my own for like six weeks, playing Hearthstone in the apartment in San Francisco. And I was like, 
oh, everyone's like blowing me up with Ragnaros the Fire Lord in this game. And like, I can't craft this card because I just, I was earning like one pack every couple of days basically with in game gold. And at some point, I just went, but if you just buy loads of cards, you can just you can just smash them all into dust and yeah. use the dust to buy to make yourself a Ragnaros the Fire Lord. And then you would have Ragnaros the Fire Lord. And wouldn't you be a happier person if you lived in a world where you aren't Ragnaros the Fire Lord? And I was like, yeah, why, yes, I would. And like before I know it, <laughs> like my debit card was being punched into Battle.net and I was fucked forever. Yeah. That was the end. The beginning of the end. That's how it starts. I can't believe we've spoken for 45 minutes about... I- microtransactions and we have not even spoken about Fortnite. we do this every time we just ignore like we haven't really talked about giant thing we, we touched on battle passes as well but that feels like a whole other conversation yeah, almost. yeah. we talked about uh, we did an episode on like live service games where we talked about a, a battle pass was a decent about. amount my question for you guys is then like what's next if we've been through all these like these eras of microtransactions what is the next like awful mutation that we're going to get stuck with oh it, this literally it. just popped into my head as a like uh, hellscape idea, but with <laughs> the rise of with the rise of AI, most people are kind of certainly feels like in the game space are pretty against it. But yeah. imagine a, imagine a hellscape where people are using AI to generate their own outfits and then selling their own outfits to each other, and some of them actually look really cool. And you're like, okay, do I want to do I want to buy the one? This. That's sort of what i was thinking tim minus the ai but adding that in there makes it even worse and you're probably right i was just thinking that like we are the microtransactions next is like i'm thinking about like the sims and other genres where like content creators like it's really popular to to make stuff and like give it to other players and developers obviously want in on that like bethesda wants you to be doing mods through the creation program not like everybody that's a select few but they do that the Sims has the gallery that is not monetized, but <laughs> Minecraft and it is has a monetized. TOS. Well, uh, there's so it's much against, gray area, and that's like a TOS constant in in The Sims, I think. But it 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 has been a long running tradition of creators trying to monetize. Give it to the next generation of Sims. They're going to start taking a cut of the stuff that you make for other players. Absolutely, a hundred percent. And like because Minecraft already does it. The Minecraft marketplace is just quietly like if you don't realize, like people make levels make skins make whatever and they sell it to each other for the currency the premium currency that you buy in the minecraft marketplace like that's how that whole thing works i think that's how fortnite creator stuff some of it works as well like you can i don't know if you can sell stuff with fortnite you definitely can minecraft marketplace and that's i think where we're headed next is just us like developers aren't even going to be feeding the content in the machine we're going to be feeding content in the machine and we're going to be a paying for it from each other and then also giving over part of like what we earn on the stuff we make to the developer for being on their platform it's just gonna be i think you're right the amazon and storefront i remember before i even worked for uh our company like more than 20 years ago playing sims and being pretty into it and finding yeah. out like you could download wallpapers and stuff from other creators and then downloading these really like flowery like laura ashley style wallpapers from my house being really <laughs> excited by it and that now feels like this like blessed utopia of people like just making cool shit and sharing it and like like we've we've strayed so far from God's light now. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> we have well, whatever's next, I'm sure it's gonna be even more terrifying than what we have now. It won't be cheaper, that's where you can be for sure. It won't be cheaper. It won't be cheaper, that's for damn sure. Uh, well, thank you, Tim, for coming and talking to us about microtransactions, having a good little moan about it with us, basically. Um, as Pleasure usual, <laughs> first time, first time, or long time listener, first time yapper, Tim Clark. <laughs> yeah, bring me back, bring me back. We, uh, we referenced a couple things that you can find on the website at PCGamer.com, all of our usual news reviews, guides, opinions, all that wonderful stuff. And as usual, you'll be able to talk with Molly and I about this week's episode at forums.pcgamer.com. Thank you for doing that little dance to my like little Yeah, <laughs> It keeps me on track. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> all right. Cool. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.